Hello and welcome to, finally, another episode of Armored Warfare with your host, Zar Peppers. YouTube has been rather, been rather annoying lately with glitches while uploading videos. That's why my upload schedule has been a bit out of whack lately, but hopefully that won't be the case with this damn video. Now what I like to do with this series on the background of the different vehicles of Armored Warfare is take a look at some of the stuff that people aren't normally as interested in. The underdogs, if you will. Because sometimes there's actually a pretty interesting story behind them, and this is one where I believe that's the case. So today, we look at the background of the Soviet-made BMP-1. The BMP-1 is an infantry fighting vehicle produced by the Soviet Union between 1966 and 1969, with upgraded variants being produced until 1983. Throughout the 1950s, as the Cold War heated up and the threat of nuclear war was a very real possibility, the Soviet military sought a way to transport infantry into the field through areas contaminated by nuclear or chemical weapons. This would require an airtight vehicle that could shield its passengers from the radiation outside, allowing them to safely travel through these areas and then dismount to fight alongside the vehicle in uncontaminated areas. This would increase the mobility of the infantry while keeping them safe, and then provide fire support for the infantry when they dismounted. They were also designed to fight alongside the main battle tanks. This tactic was similar to the way the Soviet infantry operated in World War II, where infantry would advance in close proximity to their tanks, either riding on or fighting alongside the tanks. This provided the tank with protection from enemy infantry with anti-tank weapons or explosives, and it would provide the infantry with fire support from the tank, protection from either enemy tanks or by using high explosive rounds to eliminate machine gun nests and bunkers. This differed slightly from the German Blitzkrieg tactic, wherein the tank forces would advance ahead of the infantry, then the infantry would advance in their wake, cleaning up whatever pockets of resistance were left behind. The advantage of the Soviet tactic was the tanks having greater protection and infantry having increased mobility riding on the Soviet tanks, usually the T-34, while the German infantry would often be advancing on foot. The BMP-1 was to adapt to this tactic to the modern nuclear battlefield of the Cold War by allowing infantry squads to be protected from radiation and small arms fire by being inside the vehicle. It also allowed the infantry inside to fight from within the vehicle with ports around the vehicle for them to fire their guns out of. The design requirements for the BMP-1 specified that it would be able to take out similar vehicles and was mounted with a 73mm smoothbore gun. It was equipped with an autoloader, however, due to its unreliability, it was all also possessed the ability to be loaded manually, and in some variants the autoloader was removed altogether. The gun had the ability to fire high explosive and heat ammunition, and later Later on, um, HE fragmentation rounds were added as well. Despite its small caliber, its heat ammunition posed a serious threat to NATO tanks of the 60s and 70s, with the ability to penetrate between 280 and 350 millimeters of steel armor. Of course, that isn't the case in Armored Warfare, where it has significantly less penetration values. But that's just due to the route they decided to go for the mechanics of the different types of ammunition. I go into this in more detail in my Ammunition 101 video. Along with the 73mm gun, they were also equipped with the 9M14 anti-tank wire-guided missile. The missiles were guided manually using a small joystick. Operators would require intensive training in order to use the system. A skilled operator could hit the target between 60 and 90% of the time but in certain unfavorable conditions or with unexperienced operators, the accuracy could be as little as 2 to 25 percent. Some other flaws were the speed of the missile, which could take as much as 30 seconds to reach its target, and because it was manually guided, the system could be thwarted by a well-placed smokescreen. The upgraded Saklos system dealt with some of these issues. It had welded rolled steel armor with a thickness between 6mm and 33mm. The vehicle was required to protect 
against up to 23mm armor piercing rounds fired from a distance of 500 meters or 550 yards at the front of the vehicle with highly sloped frontal armor to assist in protection as well. However, the quality of armor was different depending on where in the Warsaw Pact that the vehicle was manufactured. The side, rear, and top armor were adequate to protect against 7.62mm small arms fire, but not 12.7mm fired from close range. One of the first major conflicts that it took part in was the Soviet-Afghan War, in which many vulnerabilities became apparent. They were extremely vulnerable to RPGs in a large part because of its ammunition storage. They would penetrate the vehicle 95% of the time, often resulting in the detonation of the stored ammunition, killing everybody inside. Because of this, many infantry chose to ride outside of the vehicle instead of being on the inside, as the threat of nuclear radiation would not be a factor in the Soviet-Afghan war. Sort of a call back to riding on the outside of the T-34s during the Great Patriotic War. I've seen some footage from the current conflict in Syria that illustrate this flaw with the BMP-1 in quite startling detail. The driver was often vulnerable to mines hitting the BMP's left track, however the same wasn't true for the mines hitting the right track. The drivers would often put sandbags on the bottom of their area to protect themselves from this vulnerability. The problem was partly solved with increased armor plating on the floor that were introduced in the BMP-1D, otherwise known as the Afghan variant. But despite its flaws, the BMP-1 is one of the most widely used infantry fighting vehicles ever produced. Although its intended role of fighting in a nuclear battlefield thankfully never came to fruition, it nevertheless played an important role in the Soviet military, with newer variants still being produced today. In many ways, it continues the Soviet tradition of highly mobile infantry transportation and support from the later stages of the Great Patriotic War and their unstoppable advance into the Germany. In the end, 20,000 of these infantry fighting vehicles were produced and used by the Soviet Union in Russia, India, Poland, and the People's Republic of China, to name a few. There are also many videos on YouTube showing them in use in the Syrian Civil War alongside Syrian T-72s. In armored warfare, it is primarily used as a fast recon vehicle, and it can actually be pretty effective against a large range of targets with its heat ammunition. Although its horrible gun depression can be a bit frustrating when trying to use it on unlevel terrain. In the game, they have one without the ATGM and one with the ATGM. As for the 73mm gun, it won't usually penetrate the front armor of a main battle tank unless you're aiming at the lower glacius, but it can be very effective when used against the side armor of most main battle tanks while using the heat rounds. So that's the BMP-1. And for such a lesser known military vehicle, it actually has a pretty interesting story behind it. So if you're interested, there's quite a bit more information on, on these things if you want to do any further research. As for me, I think that's where I'll leave it for today. Until next time. People's Republic.